Refrigeration and air conditioning systems have dramatically improved over the years in performance, reliability, as well as energy efficiency. That's mostly been due to technological advancements of each individual component, making them digital and able to connect as well as communicate with other components in the system. We started off with purely mechanical components. These are things like valves and pressure gauges, which all operate individually. They are manually controlled and they rely on a human operator. Then components started to become electronic. Expansion valves went from simple fixed orifice devices to thermostatic mechanical valves. And now they are using stepper motors and electronic controls for very precise control. At one point, pressure and temperature sensors were visual only with mechanical moving parts. And now increasingly, they use electronics to take much more accurate measurements and relay this information to a controller. Even liquid level sensors can now not only tell us the level of refrigerant in a system, but they also use microwaves to detect refrigerant states. And we have covered that in detail previously. Now, these electrical and electronic controls and components gave us the ability to start connecting components in a system. This allowed us to automate many of the manual tasks. But now we're entering a new phase, a phase of internet connectivity and big data through IoT or Internet of Things. This allows everything to be connected, monitored, optimized, and even operated using artificial intelligence and machine learning. This is the future of the HVAC industry. Now, I've teamed up with Danfoss, who have kindly sponsored this video, and they are covering part two of this with a discussion from their IoT product experts, Thomas and Julian, with regards to the future of connected cooling, as well as how their fully connected cloud-based platform, Allsense, will shape the future of HVAC with a focus on food retail. There's lots of interesting points in their discussion, so I'll leave a link in the video description down below for you to check that out. So, why do we want to connect systems and components? The most important aspect of a refrigeration system is that it actually works. When a fault occurs on site, there are a few ways it's detected. Usually, someone such as the site manager reports a problem and a technician is dispatched. Otherwise, a service technician will manually check the operation during routine inspection and service, and they will try to spot any faults. Larger sites might have a resident engineer within the building who maintains the system. They might be lucky and have some form of building management system that alerts them to, say, for example, a high temperature alarm on their critical assets. The smaller systems within the building probably won't have any connectivity. The only way to know there is a fault is either by inspection or via an audible alarm. In any case, the engineer must manually inspect the system for a fault and try to diagnose the problem. Many of the issues require a person to have spotted the problem within their working hours. The engineer will likely need to order spare parts or contact a specialist to come to site. This all takes time and the system might need to be turned off until the repair is carried out because this is reactive maintenance where maintenance is carried out as a reaction to a problem. But with IoT, everything is connected and can be autonomously or manually monitored 24-7. A fault can be reported instantly to the site engineer and even more importantly, faults can be predicted before they occur. Now, predictive and proactive maintenance has existed for a long time, but this is mostly based on rule of thumb, or a separate piece of dedicated hardware, such as a vibration sensor, is installed on a pump, or a prediction is made during manual inspection based on an industry guide. So, it's not always accurate and usually involves manual readings. However, with IoT, we have a lot more sensors and every component acts as a data point. This gives us continuous monitoring, which means predictions are much more accurate for fault finding as well as fault prediction. So the engineer can be told in advance what the problem is, what spare parts might be required, and also what tools they are going to need. So we could now even start to see the roles reverse. With the site manager now being told there is a fault, 
and that an engineer is en route to fix this. We don't necessarily need to wait for someone to report a problem. And when the engineer arrives, they already know what and where the problem is and they have the parts and tools required. So system downtime can be minimized, it can be avoided, and it can be planned for. This can also provide opportunity for remote monitoring and potentially even remote operating. So more simple tasks such as resetting an alarm can potentially be taken care of remotely without the need for a technician to physically visit the site. Every system will still require routine maintenance. Usually during this time, the technician needs to manually write down the temperature and pressure of the system as well as other points such as the current drawn by the compressor. This takes up a lot of time and it only gives an insight into the performance at the very moment the engineer is physically there. If there is an intermittent fault, this will therefore not be detected. But with IoT, there's no need for any of this because we can instantly generate a report for any moment in time and compare it to previous points. So we can save valuable time and also pick up on problems that are hard to diagnose. Then we have system performance. Because all the components are storing their performance data in the cloud, we can now compare how each component, as well as the entire system, is performing by comparing it to every other connected system and component. This can be in terms of energy performance, but also the control strategy and even things such as the frequency of breakdowns and repairs. We can then identify operating issues, for example, the temperature of a compressor or whether ice is forming on an evaporator coil. This gives us huge insight into system operation. With such a vast pool of information, we can find the best solutions and propose strategies to optimize the system and controls. And that's because we have the ability to compare it against all other connected units and each system will be slightly different. Now, a really great feature of this is that with so much information being processed, we can evaluate how the performance of a system would change if, for example, we installed a new compressor or if we changed the control strategy or, say, altered the temperature set point. So we can get insights into how other components in the system will perform, how the energy consumption will vary, etc. From this, we can more accurately plan budgets for maintenance and upgrades. As we are collecting and storing data, we can accurately calculate the efficiency of the system. But we can go much further than this and actually forecast the energy consumption. For example, based on the upcoming weather forecast or even on the expected occupancy of the building. So we can predict the operating costs and also the carbon emissions. It also allows manufacturers to learn much more accurately how their products are used and this data can be used to improve future models or even release software updates to improve the components that are currently installed. We can also integrate all the systems within a building. So the heating and ventilation system, the lighting, the solar panels, and even the refrigerators within a store can all communicate with each other. Therefore, if we predict that the cooling system will generate X amount of waste heat, then we could use this to offset the hot water energy demand by diverting this waste thermal energy. A really great example of this use of technology is a supermarket in Germany, which uses an integrated IoT system and is able to operate with an energy consumption roughly 20% lower than the average European supermarket. One of the ways it's achieving this is because it's essentially acting as an energy store. During times of cheap, abundant electricity, the compressors work harder to produce and store extra cooling. Then, when demand is high on the electrical grid and electricity is therefore more expensive, the store can turn off the compressors for a while and use the stored cold energy instead. There's also lithium battery storage too. So if a compressor does need to turn on during peak demand, the battery can cover some of this demand and this will reduce the operating costs. Of course, this could be recharged with solar energy too. It's a pretty interesting technology story and I'll leave a link in the video description down below if you want to check that out. And also don't forget to check out part two of this video for a discussion on IoT by Danfoss. Links can be found in the video description down below for that. 
Okay, that's it for this video, but to continue learning about HVAC engineering, then check out one of the videos on screen now and I'll catch you there for the next lesson. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, and of course, theengineeringmindset.com.